What's up everybody? I am Joe Tobias in Washington State, a Loma photographer based in Seattle. And uh, one thing about this channel is I really am trying to be honest with it. And so you're never gonna hear me tell you to buy something you shouldn't buy. And with that, I also want to be honest with my own work. If I think I'm making good photos in this channel, I wanna say like, I think these are good photos. And when I make stuff that isn't, I think it's also really important to take the honesty and say like, this didn't turn out like I think it did. And the, anal the analysis of why it didn't is usually more helpful than saying like, hey, look at my successes and trying to say like, why is this not what I want? And so that's what today is. I don't like the photos that I took for this video and I'm still gonna show them to you and I'm still gonna talk about why and I hope that that will help you both have a more honest opinion of who I am as a photographer, but also to be able to look at your own work more critically and say like, yeah, that didn't turn out, but I think I know why and be able to then leverage that into making better photos in the future. With these kind of videos and stuff, about half of them are stuff that I have pre-planned, stuff that I've thought through and I was like, oh, okay, so I want to make a review of that camera, so therefore I need to get film, I need to make a plan, I need to go shoot it, I need to do what, I need blah, 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 blah. And there's also a lot of times where I'm just out and I realize I have a camera, I have film, or I have a plan, if something strikes in the moment, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go do that, it'll be fun. And so this was that latter type of a video. So I grew up south of Gig Harbor, um, Washington, which is, on the Puget Sound here in Seattle, or like south of Seattle. Um, and my grandparents lived in this cabin, which is even further south. And that cabin, once they passed, became kind of a family cabin. And so now we all share it and take turns going out there. And so we were we were out, out at that cabin and I had a little bit of time, I was gonna go take photos. And so with that, I had this idea that when, I'm, when we're driving out there, there's this one, decrepit building that has always been a waypoint for me. Every time I'm going out there, that I see this building that in my mind, even like when I was really little, I was like, hey, we're almost to Grammy and Papa's house. Yes. Um, and now, you know, 30 years later, the building's still there. And so I wanted to make good photos of this building before it goes away. Not that I think it's going, it doesn't show any, signs that they're about to take it down or anything like that but it's definitely it's like old and crappy and it just feels like it's one of those things that it could be gone tomorrow or it might be there for 30 more years I, I really don't know and so with it i just wanted to to go out and take photos of that particular building so as i was heading out there i grabbed my mamiya 6 um, with a roll of portrait 400 and then also my like m6 and some superior 200 inside of it and so these are you know, two of my favorite film cameras and I thought like, I'm gonna go make some great images here and just like document that, that little waypoint of my family's story and it'd be really fun. So I was driving out and along the way, cause I am who I am, I made it a quarter of a mile down the road before I stopped to take photos because stuff jumps out of me. I'm like, yeah, that's way cooler. And so the way that our cabin is, there's kind of like this little isthmus and the high, the tide was really high and I thought that the reflection was looking really cool. And so I hopped out and took a couple photos with both the Mamiya and also with the Leica. And yeah, I, I don't know. I think the Leica ones are okay. Um, okay, if, but they're boring. It was one of those moments when I went out to try to take a photo where there wasn't really a subject to focus on. There wasn't a hero. There wasn't... Um, a main thing to build the image around. I was just trying to capture a scene and that's not necessarily wrong. If you don't have something that you're trying to build around, it, it often feels very revisionist history when you find it. And a lot of times if you don't have that to start with, just for me at least, my photos just feel bland and feel blah. And that's what I kind of feel about all these. Like they're just mediocre photos of a high tide. Cool. So I kept driving and I got to the, the spot where the, this particular building is. I just feel that as soon as I got out of the car and I started to make photos, I knew that they weren't very good, which is, it's a tough place to be. Cause I feel like in some, some respects, you should push through when you're not making photos. And sometimes you should trust your gut and just be like, these aren't working, I should go try again. But I kind of, I was there. I decided I wasn't gonna take a million photos. I was just gonna take, three or four with the uh, Mamiya, a few with uh, the like, and we'll just see what happens. And with it, I was just really struggling to find the compositions. Um, my Mamiya has a 75 millimeter uh, lens on it, which is 50, 55-ish millimeters on a normal camera. And so it's it's pretty tight. But then on my, my Leica, I had a 35 millimeter lens, so it's pretty wide. And I just felt like both of them were doing a 
poor job of what I needed to. And that like the Mamiya was too tight and that I could only stand like on the opposite side of the road. And I just couldn't get far enough away to take good photos with it. And then the Leica was too wide, that everything was too wide. And it just was not like I was always getting power lines or the road or I'm like standing in the middle of a highway. And so cars are coming through and stuff. It just became challenging. And I tried shooting straight on. I tried different angles and stuff. But at the same point, I also wanted to be really careful not to photograph the house in the background because I didn't want as much as the photos were about this kind of decrepit building. The house behind it isn't exactly in great shape either, but I really wanted to be conscious to not turn this into like poverty porn photos of just like, hey, look at the decrepit house and stuff. Cause that just feels, as I don't have much of a story that goes around it. It's just, there's not, there's not as much personality. It just feels like I was kind of voyeuristic and stuff. And so I really wanted to make sure that I was only photographing the building itself and it just wasn't working and I, and I knew it in the moment. And uh, so it didn't take me too long to take the photos and realize that like, nope, these aren't, these aren't good. So I hopped back in the car and kept on driving. Once I finally left that, that spot, I feel like photos started maybe get a little bit better. Um, they, I took this one photo of kind of some trees down this like dirt cul-de-sac thing. And I don't know, I think it's an okay photo, um, but nothing that great, nothing I'm really proud of or anything. Um, and then I continued on to the marina that's that's near near there. And again, in the moment, I really thought I was making good photos. I thought I was making stuff that I was gonna be proud of. And I look back at these photos here in the Mia that and they just, they're, they're kind of, they're boring. They feel like as much as I tried to find a subject in them to find a way to, to focus my attention through the square frame, it just wasn't working. And everything was that same problem of it either being too tight or too wide but not being the right focal length to really make the photos that I wanted to make. So I kept on driving down and that's where I, I, the last like three or four photos in the rolls, I feel like are okay. This one here of this house with the, the sweeping driveway on here, I really like this composition. I feel that the way that it kind of creates the S curve or kind of like an S seven shape that the driveway into the house creates, I, I find that composition really appealing and it really balanced well for me. And uh, that's one thing that I, I really enjoy about shooting squares is that I feel like that way that you can kind of try to circle yourself into, like if, if you're staring down the top of a funnel and you get sucked into the middle, I feel like that's kind of what this kind of a photo does is it keeps looping your eye around the frame in a way that really, it worked for me. And then there's this one here of, you can see the above ground pool in the middle of the field and you can kind of sort of see coming off to the side there, what had been last summer, a really epic water slide that they had built that went into it and now is overgrown with sticker bushes and stuff and knock on wood, I hope they build it back because it looks like that family was having a blast. But I just feel like I, this one really works. Like there's enough detail in the shadows. The greens are green, but they're not like over green. There are it, like this photo finally, like this is my favorite photo of the roll for sure. And I feel like the details are actually there. You know, I took my last couple of photos just of the this one field right by the house and I don't know it's okay I but there's something about the the portrait that day and I don't know what it is that it just didn't work following my video of the Oregon road trip that I posted um, I had a couple comments from there people saying that it might be that they're not living out very well because you're shooting on a flat day with a non contrasty film like Portra. And so then trying to pull it back and post isn't super great. So if you had started with a more contrasty film, it might've worked better. And I think that's a really good point. Um, so maybe if I would have shot this on something like Ektar 100, or if I had pushed the film, or if I had maybe shot, you know, black and white or, you know, HP5 at push to stop or something like that. Maybe that would have pulled out these scenes a little bit better and pushed those highlights up into the whites a little bit more, but made those, the details in the shadows be a little bit stronger. Um, I also am really finding that this particular lens on the Mamiya 6, as much as it is crazy sharp, it also vignettes pretty hard. And that's something that I, is fine for portrait work. It's fine for when I'm doing stuff that's close to it. But if I'm gonna be shooting wide open at 3.5, if I'm gonna be focusing to infinity, that becomes a problem that it just, it becomes very obvious the way that that is. I know I'm sure I could spend more time in post making the vignette go away, but I'm just discovering more and more that this, this lens really likes to be in the 5.6 to 8 range. And so whether that means I should have been shooting on a tripod or 
just really slowing down my shutter speeds or changing something to make that be different, I think would have been a really good move for me. But again, this is why you learn. And the last thing is there was something weird that happened with this particular role in its development. You can see in the unedited or like versions here of these films, like right across the bottom, this weird coloredness to it. And I don't know what happened. So like, it, I don't know if it was that something got bumped, that there was some residual like stuff on like the the reels like there's a lot of things i've come into my mind of, like this could be the reason but it all just came down to like i don't it just didn't work and so i made this really I don't know, if you're still here watching this video of me explaining why my photos suck i'm really impressed but i also really think it's important for me to say like sometimes your photos suck and they the only thing that like is a real problem with that is like, yeah, it's a, it's a bummer you spent money on it. But if you don't learn from it, if you don't analyze all the reasons why you think that they didn't live up to, to your hopes, um, then you're not going to get better. And so because I've done this, I feel like I'm in a better place that I could go back out and try to film, photograph that same building again. I don't know if I would use the square format with the Mamiya 6, but if I tried maybe with my RZ67, like I said, if I was using black and white film, um, especially like pushed HP5, I think that would look really good. If there was a way that I could maybe try a different angle on those and be able to get a, or get a little bit closer and find just little details on that building rather than trying to photograph the whole building at once, I think that there could be interesting things. And honestly, I'm coming up with ideas of like, in my mind, it's the passing of that building that was warranting we're getting to grandma's house. So maybe I should be like sitting in the passenger seat and taking pictures of it as we drive or something like that. What is a way that I can, but with that, like what is a way that I can take these memories, these thoughts that I have about this story and I can better represent them as well as just take better photos and not script the development. So those are all my thoughts I have on this one. Thank you so much for watching and um, see you around.